Hello everyone and welcome again. So we're continuing our discussion about the orthopedics trauma basic principles class. And uh, now we are going to talk about the Castillo Anderson classification of open fractures. Because after this video, we will talk about the open fractures management. And for you to manage the, the open fractures, you have to grade them first. And grading them, you, you will use the Gastello Anderson classification. And the grading will, will decide the management after all. So with that, let's start. So here we have some facts about the Gastello Anderson classification. So it is the most commonly used system to classify open fractures, and it was created by the American orthopedic surgeons Raman Gastello, John Anderson, and Thomas Williams in, in 1984, and it classif classifies the open fractures based on the size of the wound and the soft tissue damage and also the degree of contamination. And it helps guiding the treatment decisions and the prognosis, and it also helps in deciding the antibiotic cover used. And the higher the grade of the injury, the higher the risk of infection, and thus the more aggressive antibiotic regimen used. So in the Gastella Anderson classification, we have three grades, and the third grade has three types. So three grades, the, and the third grade has three types, and let's start with the grade one. So grade one, wound length in grade one is a small wound that is less than one cm in length, and it is punctured by a bone spike. And the fracture is caused by low energy injury mechanism. And there is little soft tissue damage, and the wound is clean. Now for grade two, the wound length here is larger wound. It is more than one cm in length, but less than 10 cm. So remember grade one is less than one cm, grade two is from one cm to 10. And it is caused by low to moderate energy injury mechanism. And there is, soft, so, there is more soft tissue damage than type one, but it is still minimal. And there is moderate contamination of the wound. For grade three, the wound length is even larger wound. It is more than 10 cm in length, now remember, grade 1 is less than 1 cm, grade 2 from 1 to 10, and grade 3 is more, more than 10. And it is caused by high energy injury, and it is large laceration, extensive damage to skin and underlying soft tissue, and maybe vascular compromise. And contamination in grade 3 is extensive. And it is furtherly classified into three types, as we mentioned. So grade 3A, there is no extensive soft tissue loss or bariosteal, or bariosteal stripping. Uh, bariosteal stripping is the bariosteum being stripped out from the uh, bone. The barios remember the bariosteum contains the vascular supply to the bone. So if, if the bariosteum is stripped away, meaning the bone has no vascular supply, and this would lead to the bone necrosis and subsequently infection. So in grade 3A, there is no extensive tissue loss or bariosteal stripping. So there is no extensive bariosteal stripping too. And the fractured bone can be adequately covered by the available soft tissue. In grade 3B, there is extensive bariosteal stripping and tissue loss, more than grade 3A. The fracture cover in grade 3B is not possible without the use of flaps. Flaps is a skin with its vascular supply, meaning the flap is you is taken from a, a place other than the wound, is a skin from place other than the wound, and it's taken into the wound area so to, to cover the wound. It's called flap. And finally, the grade 3C is when there is an arterial injury that need to be repaired regardless of the amount of the soft tissue damage. So any open fracture with any length, if associated with arterial injury, then consider type 3C immediately. Now we are going to talk about a very important topic 
in open fracture management and that is the antibiotic cover. So in open fractures, they are, very, they are associated with high risk of infection, so it is very important for the antibiotic cover. And the choice of antibiotic vary depending on local protocol, but typically it consists of either acephalosporin antibiotic, for example, cefuroxime, 1.5 grams three times daily, or a penicillin antibiotic, for example, coamoxiclav, 1.2 gram three times daily. But if the patient has penicillin allergy, then clindamycin, 600 milligrams four times daily. And this antibiotic cover is used as soon as possible when the patient get to the hospital. And even in some, in some systems, the antibiotic cover is given in the ambulance or before that. And continue to be used for one day after wound debridement if the injury was grade one, meaning gastro grade one injury, and for three days after the wound debridement if the injury was a grade two uh, and grade three. At wound debridement, you add aminoglycoside antibiotic to the first antibiotic you gave for all the grades. Example, gentamicin 1.5 milligram per kilograms, three times daily. If the wound cover is not possible at debridement and to be delayed until grafting or, or the fracture is a grade 3B or C, uh, then add vancomycin or tycoplanin. So vancomycin and tycoplanin or tycoplanin is given in two, uh, in two occasions. The first one is that if the wound cover is not possible or if the fracture is a grade is gastrolo grade 3b or grade 3c. Anti-tetanus anti toxoid is given with higher grades and depending on local protocols. And with that we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support this work you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Peace.